Hello again, this is David Keg, concept artist and illustrator. So at this point, we have selected our favorite rough character concept for our dwarf hero, and we are ready to polish him up into a final full color concept design. In this video, we will cover how to bring our rough design to a final polish through a relatively simple step-by-step -step character rendering demo. We will look at basic concepts of light and form and how to interpret that in our own character illustration. We will also cover a quick and easy method for exploring color variations and color roughs, and some do's and don'ts to keep in mind throughout the process. By the end, we will have a full color, fully polished character concept. So first I want to cover some lighting and form rendering basics before we jump right into polishing our character. This might be a review if you've been drawing for a while, or if you've had some experience with life drawing or life painting. But if you are a beginner, this will at least give you a very quick overview of how light and form works. This rendering process requires both training your hand and drawing skills, but also your eyes to begin to see and understand how light and shadows work. So it might take some time and lots of practice to become proficient in these skills. So as we clean up our rough concepts, we will be doing a final line drawing pass and also adding some value to help clarify the 3D form. It may be tempting to stop at simple 2D line drawing, like the example here on the left. And certainly a well-handled line drawing can do a pretty good job of implying 3D form. However, being able to render some simple values and create the illusion of 3D form, as seen on the right, is more helpful and easier to understand, especially when a modeler takes the concept design and translates it into 3D space. To break down this process, we must first take a look at how light interacts with three-dimensional objects. Let's start with examining light on a simple 3D form. Here we have a 3D sphere with a single light source to the upper left and slightly forward of the sphere, as indicated by the light bulb icon. Light can be a tricky thing to understand, but in this quick example, we will walk through eight key elements of light and form to look for and to study. First, the light and halftone. This area varies in value and is the surface of the object facing the light source. The light and halftone area includes the entirety of the light side of the form until the form turns away from the light source at the edge of the shadow. Second, the highlight. This is the area where you see the reflection of the light source on a shiny object. The highlight may not be as bright or noticeable depending on how soft or diffuse the light source may be or depending on the reflective nature of our object. If our object is made out of polished metal, for example, the highlight will be relatively distinct and very bright. On the other hand, if our object is made of flesh or cloth, the highlight may not be as noticeable due to the surface properties of the material. Third, the shadow. This is the area of the object that is turned away from the light source and thus falls into darkness. Fourth is the terminator or the terminator line. This is the very edge of the shadow, just where the form turns away from the light source. The exact area between the light and shadow sides of the form. Fifth, the core shadow. The core shadow is the darkest part of the shadow on the object itself. Now I know this could get a little confusing, but this is not the edge of the shadow or the terminator, but usually just beyond it. And in this example, it wraps like a dark band around our sphere. This is the darkest part of the form because it's where the surface is turned away from the light source far enough that it's in shadow, but not far enough to be affected by any kind of secondary lighting or bounce light. Number six, reflected light. This is the light that bounces off of the surrounding objects and reflects back into the dark shadow areas of our sphere. In this case, we are seeing the light bouncing off the surface of the ground plane and hitting the shadow side of the sphere. Keep in mind that this reflected light is much weaker and more diffused than the main light source, and its value should be a bit lighter than the rest of the shadow side, but still darker than any value on the light side of the object. Number seven, cast shadow. As the light hits the object, the object obscures the rays of light and creates a cast shadow. This is the kind of shadow that's created when you're standing outside in the sun and you can see a silhouette of yourself on the ground. Finally, number eight, the occlusion shadow. 
This is the darkest part of the entire form, and it happens at the point of contact between two forms, in this case, the sphere and our ground surface. Now let's look at these properties on a more complex form. Here we have a relatively simple head bust. Let's identify some of our key light and form elements happening on the head form. We are keeping a similar light source from our sphere in the previous example. Keep in mind that these observations will change with different lighting situations or with different forms. Our goal is to learn to see and understand how light works with 3D form, so that we can replicate its properties under any conditions, even when painting from our imaginations. Here we have our light and halftone, as seen in the overall light pattern of the face, the highlight, often noticeable on the forehead, end of the nose, as well as any other prominent features, the shadow area, or the overall dark pattern of the face, the terminator, or the very edge of the light and shadow, the core shadow, the dark band of shadow where the form has turned away from our main light, but isn't being affected by any bounce light, the reflected light, in areas where the environment around the object reflects light back into the object from the main light source. The cast shadow, where objects block light and cast shadows onto the form, including the nose and chin in this situation. And finally, the occlusion shadow, not featured prominently in this example, but can be found anywhere two forms touch, such as the eyelids and lips. So now that we have a basic understanding of light and form, Let's go ahead and transfer this knowledge to our dwarf hero.